I'm here with Matt Gill today, the MD of White Rock Minerals. White Rock Minerals is an ASX listed near term gold producer with three key assets in tier one mining jurisdictions being Victoria and New South Wales in Australia and Alaska. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Hi, Casey. Pleasure to be with you today. Um, let's just jump straight into it. So we're, we're here today to talk about the journey that White Rock's been through over the past few years and the significance of um, its most recent announcement to restart production at its Morningstar mine, which it acquired back in August of last year. Matt, did you want to give a quick background on yourself and your involvement with the company? Sure. Look, more than happy to for your listeners. So I'm a, I'm a mining engineer. I'm a, I'm a proud Victorian uh, based here in Ballarat, so great gold mining centre in, in Australia. Uh, I joined White Rock about six years ago, and back then we had just one asset, the Mount Carrington Gold and Silver project in New South Wales. Uh, And since that time, we both acquired the large project that we now have in Alaska called Red Mountain. And last year, as you rightly said in the introduction, we merged with a company to acquire the Woods Point Gold Project here in Victoria, east of Melbourne. So, yeah, quite quite a journey over the last three years and uh, looking forward to the, to the next part of that journey with our investors and shareholders. Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting journey to date. I think what the market would like to hear more of is why investors such as Crescat, HSBC and um, Citicorp and McNally have paid attention and supported the stock on the register to date. Did you want to give a bit of background into what you think are the key highlights of the company? Yes, for, for sure I can do that. And certainly understanding uh, the investor base, I think, is important for a shareholder uh, because that way they can see who else has done their homework on the company, um, who else has invested their own money and, and what they think are the opportunities. So certainly you mentioned some of our top shareholders and look, our shareholder base is quite broad. Uh, Crestcat, you mentioned, are our largest shareholder. They're a Denver-based precious metals fund and they invested into White Rock on the back of our large and highly prospective uh, Red Mountain project in Alaska, uh, given that that's in the US and they're based in the US. Uh, But interestingly, they were also a major shareholder of the company we merged with to acquire the Woods Point Gold Project in Victoria. So they're actually on both sides of the fence. Some of the others that you mentioned are are nominees um, for major shareholders underneath those nominees. HSBC is an example. But within that, we've got um, a couple of uh, funds out of Switzerland. Um, We've got a group out of Hong Kong. We've got a group out of New York. Uh, And we've got a couple of high net worths, and you mentioned one um, based in Sydney. So quite a broad spread. Each each see White Rock for a variety of opportunities. Alaska, definitely. uh, But also, I would like to think our um, gold project with significant potential here in Victoria. Yep, I think um, given how the longevity of most of these investors' holdings on the register definitely indicates that they see a lot of potential in White Rock's projects. So that's always great to see in a company. So moving on, I think while White Rock has three assets that um, it's prioritising, the the main star today is Morningstar and being the Woods Point Gold Project. You've just announced that you're looking to restart the Morningstar mine, paying particular attention to um, some specific targets. Did you want to jump into what the production means for the company and what investors can look out for? Yeah, the restart's a very important milestone, I think, for any junior company. You know, White Rock listed 12 years ago as a small junior explorer. The last statistics I saw, there's about 800 resource juniors on the ASX. And so a significant milestone for many for any junior would be being able to go into production. And that's what we're focused on and very excited about in the next few months. So the announcement that we just put out is giving the reader uh, and also our shareholders a market update on the activities that we've been doing at the Woods Point Gold Project since we acquired it in August. Uh, And that that includes a description of the areas that we've been drilling, uh, a description of the areas that we've since identified uh, that we can now start to develop to, to mine. Um, But also it's got some photographs just to give the reader a bit of a feel for actually what's on the ground rather than just words. And we hope that that will help give the the reader a, a sense of the activities. You know, we're ramping up people. We'll be doubling our workforce as, as we speak. Um, we're developing to two of these four areas that we've identified from our drilling. We're readying the plant. We should be 
uh, restarting that with some uh, commissioning material later this month. And yeah, we hope to be uh, then putting through some uh, material to produce gold in the next few months. Um, another initiative that was undertaken by the company as part of its renewed business strategy was to add further experience at the board level with the appointment of Chairman Peter Mangano. Matt, did you want to say a few words on Peter? Yes, so part of uh, a small junior's role is not only its physical assets, but its people and, and the board. And the board's an important component of any business that an investor should look at. You know, who, who is actually running the business? What's their experiences? You know, they're the ones that are managing the funds and the finance and the strategy. Uh, and with that, we had two directors in the UK. Uh, we were a board of five. Uh, two of the UK directors, they stepped down uh, a bit over a month ago. And Peter Lester, a long-serving chairman, also stepped down. And we announced the appointment of Peter Mangano, so a new chairman to, to the White Rock Board. So uh, Peter is a metallurgist by trade but recently been more in the capital markets and business analyst space. So a small board of three, and I think that's appropriate for a small junior. Um, but Peter brings a great depth and breadth of experience and, and a clean set of eyes uh, and energy and focus to the business. And I think that's always good to, to go through that renewal review, you know, challenge ourselves. Are we doing the right thing? Is it the right strategy as we move forward? Great. Thanks for that, Matt. It was great having you join us today um, for a short update and looking forward to seeing how the company progresses in the next few months. My pleasure and look forward to giving another update in due course. Thanks, everyone. For anyone who'd like to learn more about White Rock Minerals, feel free to contact any of our advisors at Barclay Pierce Capital or click on the link in the description.